Hi, welcome to Knowledge Graphs. My name is Sasha Bruins, and it's lecture five, Ontological Engineer for Smarter Knowledge Graphs. Um, today I will present a third hands-on of the, on the, bee, of the week, and we will talk about Swirl in Protege. So, what is actually Swirl? So, we talked about it in the lecture, and just as a reminder, Swirl is a semantic web rule, rule language and it is an extension of the web ontology language. It allows for creating of rules to infer, to infer new knowledge. Yes, and it gives you, provides you more um, possibilities to define more rules than a simple reasoner, yes, a, than an old reasoner. Swirl rules are always expressed in the form of logical axioms and they are, yeah, so they expressed using first order logic and built in predicates, which, which provides a very expressive power. Basically, we can define with rules mm, very, very much, so very much information to deduce new knowledge. But let's take a look. We will start with um, very simple, uh, very simple rules, and then we'll show how to define more complex rules, but it's actually Easy. So let's try it together. Um, first, I will uh, move to Protege and show you a simple ontology. What was there? So we stay on the same topic. We have um, pizza ontology. It's a bit different than the one what we used for the um, previous hands-on, where we had the pizza and pastas, just to keep it simple. We have one restaurant that serves pizza. And this restaurant's name is Mama in Cucina. It's an Italian restaurant, and we have just pizza there. So we have several pizza that we defined and described. For example, for cheese, margarita, prosciutto, and so on. We also have ingredients like um, yeah, simple ingredient water, but it also has subclasses like meat, where we have bacon and ham individuals. We have um, vegan ingredients like flour, mushrooms, olives, and so on. We have also just simple vegetables like bell pepper and tomato, and we have vegetarian ingredients um, like mm, mozzarella, gorgonzola, and so on. Um, the restaurant can be a vegetarian restaurant or non-vegetarian restaurant, but we don't know yet if Mama in Cucina is a vegetarian or um, non-vegetarian restaurant, but this we will find out. We also have several object properties. In particular, we have ingredient. Yes, so any dish, any pizza can have some ingredient. And we have a serves pizza, which connects restaurant to pizza it serves. We also have defined it several data type, um, sorry, um, data type properties. Here they are, uh, for example, gram, yes, so where we can also see the weight of the pizza or of other dishes. We have number of pieces in the pizza, we have price of the pizza in Mama in Cucina, and also um, yeah, different uh, stuff like that. But let's start with very easy rules. So first, what I also wanted to say, there is a swirl tab. It's a built-in plug-in, so you can also find it in case it's not here in your protege. You can find it here in Windows, Tabs, and here you can also choose what kind of tabs you want to have here. But it's already here and it looks like that. Okay, then let's move and start with the very first rule. Basically, it's called reclassification. Uh, with Swirl, you can define that any um, any class, any instance of any class, can be can also be an instance of another class. For example, here, it the if we read the formal logics, we will just see that it says if for any vegetarian ingredients, for any instance of vegetarian ingredient, this instance is also an individual of class ingredient. Yes, so. Um, in our case, vegetarian ingredient is a subclass of ingredient, but it does not necessarily have to be. So you can basically reclassify it um, how you want, and it's very it comes in handy often. So I will just copy this rule from here, and we will try it with uh, with Protege. Okay, I go to just to see what. Um, 
it will do. I'm going to eat the individuals and to some ingredient, uh, to some vegetarian ingredient, yes. So for example, goat cheese. Yes, we see that it is of type vegetarian ingredient, yes, but not of type ingredient. We can go to the swirl tab and here we can introduce a new rule. And basically, I will just past the rule what we had there. So vegetarian ingredient, um, yes, question mark x leads to ingredient question mark x. And I'll say it. Then now we try, try it. We run the rule and rules to all. That's it. Let's take a look what happened in there. And we can see that goat cheese is al now also of type ingredient. So it worked. Okay, so let's go to next rule and we'll talk about property balance assignment. It looks a bit more complicated, but let's just read it and see what it means. So for, s for some instance of type pizza, for some pizza, if there is a relation between pizza and some ingredient, the relation is ingredient, and this ingredient is of type vegetable, then pizza is connected or related to ingredient by a property vegetarian ingredient. Yes, so we basically change um, property names and provide more, uh, more information, more semantics, because the vegetarian ingredient is a more specific property than ingredient. Yes, so we take the um, class inheritance, we, we see what um, types the um, instances have and then, then change or provide more um, additional knowledge and additional properties. So let's take a look at protege. And yes, so we will define now some pizza, for example, for cheese. And we can, for example, here see that for cheese has ingredient tomato. But tomato is, of course, of type vegetable. So it works. Let's see how the swirl will do it. Basically, we introduce a new rule. You can do it as many rules, as you can introduce as many rules as you need. And basically passed this, the um, rule what we had just on the slide. So I just, I simply copied it and press OK. Of course, we run it all. OK, so let's see what changed in the ontology. We are going back to our four cheese pizza and see that um, now tomato is also connected to pizza via vegetarian um, ingredient. So it worked. And this, of course, would work for every other pizzas like pizza margarita and so on for all the vegetables. OK, let's move further and we will talk about complex class definitions. Um, this is a representation of swirl that it allows this formal logic constraints. It means that you can be very expressive. Yeah? So you can provide very expressive rules and very expressive definitions. So let's take a look and see what it means. So if there is a restaurant, X, that f serves pizza and pizza has some ingredient and this ingredient is of type meat, it means that this restaurant is, not, is a non-vegetarian restaurant. Yes, so in basically if a restaurant serves something with meat, it cannot be considered a vegetarian restaurant. Clear. So let's move back to, uh, let's copy the rule as usual and move back to the protege. So here we can see that we have some restaurant, it's mom and cucina, and it's of type restaurant and it serves some pizzas. Uh, we, know, we don't know, is, it, is, it the rest, is this restaurant a vegetarian restaurant or not? So t let's take a look at the prosciutto and we of course see that pizza prosciutto has, um, for example, ham in its, as its ingredient. So it it is meat because hemp is of type meat here. Okay, so let's go back to here and provide a new swirl rule. I introduce this rule where we define, not here, define cl complex class definitions. Yes, so basically everything what you saw on the slide, I post it. Okay, name S3. Okay. And again, I press 
and run and move it to all. And let's see how the ontology um, on the knowledge graph has changed. And we can see now that Mama in Cucina is also a non-vegetarian restaurant. So because due, based on the rules, since they serve prosciutto, it's not a vegetarian restaurant. Okay, let's move further and we will talk about built-ins in swirls and how we can work um, on with literals. Yes, so um, swirl has its own built-in methods and functions, for example, like multiply, and they can be pretty helpful sometimes. So let's see. Let's say we have a pizza and it has its price in euro, yes, some price. We can also use um, the swirl multiply to find out its price in dollars, yes, so in case it's um, in, in case it's <laughs> it's something what what we what we want to know yes something what is required or it's easier so of now of March uh, 2023 this is uh, how much the dollar um, worth but of course it can change and we can provide a new function which is price a new property price in dollars where we will see that how much the same pizza is worth in dollars okay again we copy it all and move here so let's try our well-known prosciutto pizza yes so we can see here the data properties we have its waste we have its price in euro and we have of course a number of pizzas uh, of, of pieces in the pizza but let's provide a new rule and find out how much it is worth in dollars it's basically the same rule what what you know yes so what we copy it okay we press and run the rules and let's see how it changed okay so we can see now that there is a new property price in dollars and the pizza is worth 12.72 so 72 dollars Okay, something like this is also very useful, not just for prizes, but anything what you, ca what you have to multiply and so on. So there are built-in functions in here. Okay, and last but not least, also um, a built-in built with literals what can be used is, um, let's say that we don't want to buy the whole pizza, but we want to buy just one piece. And of course, we have to find out um, what is the price of pizza uh, for one piece, yes, and we just have the price for the whole pi uh, for the whole pizza. It's the same. We basically just use the built-in function divide and introduce a new property price per piece. Okay, let's see. We are moving back to protege, and we hear we hear that there is price in euro and number of pieces, and go to Swirl, we in passed the logical rule, hit OK and everything else and let's see. And of course now we have a new property, price per, per piece, which is 3. Okay, so it can be very useful, it can be very handy, especially if you have um, new and or difficult or more complicated ontologies than these ones you can use and define and deduce new knowledge and also complete your knowledge with um, rules of swirl so please try everything out and thank you very much see you in next lecture